Kurt Busch truly has one of the wildest journeys in NASCAR. He had great success, including a championship early in his career. After a number of controversies, he left Penske in 2011 when he hit rock bottom. From relationship drama to on-track drama and a lack of on-track success in a backmarker team, his career looked like it was over. He was an angry guy and did not have respect from NASCAR, the garage, or many of the fans. He was playing second fiddle to his younger brother, who was winning what seemed like every weekend. But over the course of his last handful of seasons in NASCAR, he took a complete 180. Flashes of brilliance came back, he was a kind and stand-up guy, he gained respect from the fans, and he was a pioneer that would help build up 2311 racing into the team it is today. However, going for the pole at the 2022 Summer Pocono race, everything took a change for the worse. And look at his brother, Kurt Busch. Still as good as he's ever been behind the wheel of a race car. Yep. And you'd think that, that Kurt could go as... Oh, oh big on to a big oh, oh, car into the wall. Right before the video starts, make sure to leave a like if you enjoy, and if you find yourself coming back to watch my videos and you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so you never miss a video, and we are also on our way to 70,000 subscribers. Anyway, let's get right into it. Now, I usually like to start these videos off with a lot of background information, but this time I'm going to keep it short because I really want to focus on Kurt's personal growth throughout his long and storied career. So Kerr was born in Las Vegas, Nevada. Growing up, he and his father raced together, including Modifieds and Legends. They competed out west in Nevada, Utah, and Southern California. After graduating high school, he enrolled at the University of Arizona, where he planned to earn a degree in pharmacy. However, after his NASCAR career took off, his college degree aspirations were in the rearview mirror. In his first season in the Craftsman Truck Series, he collected four poles, four wins, second place in the championship standings, and an eighth place average finish. This landed him a cup ride immediately for Jack Roush for the 2001 season. His rookie season was pretty brutal, but he was just 22 years old and was very limited on experience. But his sophomore season was anything but a slump. Four wins and third place in the championship. 2003 saw another four-win campaign, then in 2004, Kurt Busch was crowned NASCAR champion. So at the young age of 25, he was a champion in the sport with 11 wins. But at the end of the 2005 season, Kurt found himself in some real trouble. Kurt was stopped by police in early November in 2005, where he reportedly ran a stop sign. The deputy noticed an odor of alcohol coming from his breath, and Kurt refused to take sobriety tests. He finally submitted to a breathalyzer test, which disclosed the presence of alcohol. He was then taken into custody for suspicion of driving under the influence. Bush was not charged with any alcohol-related offense, but was charged with reckless driving. This was the last straw for Jack Roush, who elected to suspend Kurt for the final two races and released him following the 2005 season. Team spokesman Jeff Smith claimed that the team was done as Kurt Busch's apologists. At this point in his career, Kurt had gained quite the reputation for controversies. In his first race as a full-time driver in the Cup Series, during the 2001 Daytona 500, he had a run-in with the Intimidator. Of course, who could forget Kurt's and Jimmy's run-ins during the early 2000s? Phoenix in 2001, Bristol in 2002, Indianapolis in 2002, and Michigan in 2003. Kurt was also gaining a reputation for being brutally honest. Just listen to this. And I don't respect Jimmy Spencer. And therefore what happened over the audio but during the race and then after the race was because of the fact that I don't respect him. I never expected him to cross over that line. And so with having two wrecked race cars, that's why I don't respect him. Later in 2003, Kurt drop kicked Sterling Marlin late in the race to win, and the fans weren't having it. Before I apologize for Sterling Marlin, I got into him, and it was a place where he was trying to let me go, and I was trying to get into one and set him up and get underneath him out of two. After a run-in with Scott Riggs at New Hampshire in 2005, Kurt confronted the number 10 team. 2006 would begin a new era for Kurt with Roger Penske. 
He had some success, 10 wins in 6 years with the team, but it didn't match his domination at Roush. 2006 wasn't all rainbow and sunshine for the new marriage. Because you're going to restart at the tail end of the longest line anyway. Dude, these cars are out of control. I can't believe how different they are with their tires. Well, we'll just keep running like you did before. I can't run up there, Roger. Dead sideways, man. 2007 saw one of Kurt's most infamous run-ins with brother Kyle at the All-Star Race. Later in that year, after an on-track incident with Tony Stewart, he pulled up to his pit box and got parked as a result. Then, beginning in 2010, Kurt was feuding with Jimmy Johnson back and forth. So this is when we start to see a lot of, we'll say, anger coming from Kurt. It was around this time that everyone would tune in to listen to the crazy things this guy was saying on the radio. After Richmond in 2011, Bush had to be physically restrained after going after then-NASCAR.com reporter Joe Minzer, who asked Bush about an on-track incident with Jimmy Johnson. Minutes later, Kurt lashed out on reporter Jenna Fryer. Just a couple of months later at Homestead, Kurt lost a transmission early into the race, flipped off people in the infield, and got caught cursing at reporter Jerry Punch before a TV interview, which seemed like the last straw for Penske. After this, Kurt was let go by the team. Reportedly, it was mutual, but the Charlotte Observer stated that Penske had enough of dealing with Kurt, much like Roush had stated six years prior. After being released, 2012 was horrible for Kurt. He was with a backmarker team with bad equipment, he had bad results, and he threw bad tantrums. Most notably, he had his incident with Bob Pockers at Dover. That you're on probation after that he said he kept, he was racing you. It refrains me from not beating the out of you right now because you asked me stupid questions. But since I'm on probation, I suppose that that's uh, improper to say as well. Because of this, he was suspended for a week. And for the first time since his rookie year in the Cup Series, he did not find victory lane. The following year in 2013, he had a slight upgrade in equipment, but still didn't find victory lane. In 2014, a move to Stuart Haas Racing saw him find victory lane again. Kurt was still involved in some controversies, but he was dialed back. But in early 2015, he was suspended from NASCAR for allegedly committing an act of domestic violence against ex-girlfriend Patricia Driscoll. This is a whole rabbit hole, including Kurt saying that she was actually a trained assassin, showed him pictures of dead bodies, and alleged she was a contract killer, which is bizarre. She alleged that Kurt slammed her head against a wall in his motorhome in September of 2014. The case was eventually tossed for lack of evidence by the prosecutors. And she seems kind of sketchy, not just being a contract killer and all, but being in and out of court for multiple things over the years, including accusing all of her other boyfriends of abuse and her being caught up in fraud. The consensus now is that she made everything up and framed Kurt. But when Kurt returned in 2015, he was a different person. He had dialed back the anger and found himself in less controversies. He was definitely maturing. As a result of being more composed behind the wheel, 2015 saw him win multiple races for the first time since 2011 and matched his career high top 10s with 21. Another 21 top 10s followed suit in 2016 with another win, which was another good year. He picked up another one in 2017, followed by five poles and a win in 2018. It was a good way to end his stint at SHR. It was rumored that Tony was not a big fan of Kurt because of their multiple run-ins, and Kurt wasn't getting their top quality cars. Rather, those were going to Kevin Harvick. He was too old and definitely too good to play second fiddle to another driver, so he made the move to Chip Ganassi. 2019 was Kurt's first season for Chip, and he won in the most dramatic fashion possible, beating his brother on a late race restart at Kentucky, still one of Kurt's most memorable wins. But when Chip Ganassi was bought out by Trackhouse Racing, Kurt unfortunately got the boot in favor of the younger Ross Chastain. But Kurt found a new home in 2022 with 2311 Racing. It was only a two-car team, and it was a new organization. Kurt was a past champion and was going to be a valuable resource to the team, and his new mentee, Bubba Wallace. Kurt was showing great speed and picked up an emotional win in Kansas, which would be the last of his career. After the ups and downs of his career, 
all the controversies, being in backmarker equipment, playing second fiddle at SHR, getting the boot at Chip Ganassi, he finally had a home in 2311 Racing that really believed in him and valued him. Just two months after this win, he'd have his seat taken away from him forever. In qualifying for the 21st race of the 2022 season at Pocono, Kurt made it to the final round of qualifying. Going for the pole, the back end of his car stepped out in turn 3, and he made hard contact with the outside wall. The caution was thrown, and Kurt walked away from his car. It appeared to be a routine crash. However, the severity of the crash was realized after it was announced that he would not race in the Pocono race because of concussion-like symptoms. Then the next week went by, then the next week. There was no update on Kurt at all. Team owner Denny Hamlin was optimistic about Kurt's return, but the team knew they would have to follow the guidance given from doctors. So at this time, it was revealed that the rear end of the car was too stiff, as later on in the season, a much younger Alex Bowman suffered a concussion after he backed it into the wall at Texas. Because of Kurt Busch's crash, NASCAR would later go on to soften up the rear of the car. But the goal was to get Kurt back in time for the 2022 playoffs so he could compete for the championship. He was locked into the playoffs from his Kansas win and would definitely get a waiver to be in the playoffs, even though he missed so many races. But he just wasn't himself. He still wasn't cleared by doctors. Then, out of nowhere, 2311 Racing announced that they were signing Tyler Reddick for 2024 and beyond. Even though this meant that there would still be an open seat at the team for Kurt for the 2023 season, it was likely that Reddick would step into that car in 2023. From the outside, it looked like Kurt was being pushed out of the seat once again. However, Denny Hamlin ensured that Kurt, whenever he was able to come back, would have a ride at 2311 Racing. After Kurt announced that he wouldn't be back for the rest of 2022, he set a new target for the 2023 Daytona 500. However, in February of 2023, his concussion was still a lingering problem. Bush was involved in the team. He was a spokesperson, helped with sponsors, and of course was a mentor to both Bubba and Tyler. You can tell how involved he was and how emotionally attached he was to the team just by listening to his call on the final lap at Coda. It's amazing, 2311 and how fast we're growing and how, how much we're doing together. It's forward together on this program and it brings Brings me a little bit to be choked up. I was hoping to be back in that car, but it's in good hands. And it's a great team, and I love racing with those guys. And in August of 2023, the announcement nobody wanted to hear was made. Kurt Busch was retiring from Cup Series competition. Everyone expected him to get back behind the wheel sooner rather than later. But never. Kurt was racing as good, if not better, as he had in the last decade. And in a moment, it was taken away from him. He was a guy that completely flipped the script. He was able to completely reinvent himself and his legacy. And it makes his story one of the anomalies in Cup Series history. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe so you never miss a video. If you have any topics that you want me to cover in a future video, definitely let me know down in the comments down below. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.